So e-bikes, it's one of these hot topics in cycling that's guaranteed to divide people and get a whole wide range of reactions. It's a bit like the wear the crash helmet, not wear the crash helmet debate. But let's go and get an up-to-date opinion. Albert, what's the verdict on e-bikes these days? E-bikes are for lazy people and cheaters. You might as well just get yourself a moped. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that my guess is that Albert's never ridden an e-bike in his life and is simply regurgitating all of the cliches because, well, everyone knows that, don't they? Just so we're clear, I don't actually have anything against e-bikes. Once upon a time, I thought they were absolutely fantastic for people who, for one reason or another, couldn't ride a regular road bike. So for instance, I knew a chap who was an avid cyclist all his life, and then suddenly in his mid-40s, he was diagnosed with a congenital heart defect. And his doctor said to him that he had to give up cycling because it put too much strain on his heart. But instead of being put off, he went out and he bought an e-bike because it basically meant that was the difference between him being able to ride a bike or giving up the thing that he loved. And as for being cheaters and being lazy, well, cheaters, that's all a question of semantics. If you look it up in a dictionary, a cheater is somebody that doesn't play by the rules or gives themselves an unfair advantage. And as long as you're not racing or trying to steal Strava segments, then you probably aren't a cheater. And lazy, well, do lazy people ride bikes? They're more likely to ride sofas. For the record, I don't own an e-bike, and nor do I have any plans to go out and buy one. And that's mainly because I've been riding the routes around here for years and years and years, and I'm perfectly happy riding my regular road bike. I have ridden an e-bike once though, and by once I mean six separate occasions over six consecutive days when I rode one across Tuscany back in September 2020. On that particular occasion, I was riding a Lapierre carbon road bike that was equipped with the Fazua crank drive system. What this meant was that all of the assistance was in the cranks and not the wheels, so there was no twist grip or button that I could press that would basically turn the bike into a moped. All the crank drive did was make pedaling easier, so if I were to stop pedaling, all assistance would stop, the bike would eventually grind to a halt and I'd probably fall over. Furthermore, if I rode faster than 30 km an hour, the assistance would stop again and I would be back to riding what effectively would be a regular road bike. For the most part, I rode the Lapierre without using any of the crank assist at all and chose to use what I called Leonardo power, basically my legs. This felt like I was riding one of my regular road bikes, although because the Lapierre had the weight of the motor and the battery, it did feel a little bit heavier than usual. So what did it feel like when I did use the motor? Well, to be honest, it didn't feel that much different from riding a regular road bike. To me, it felt like I had a fairly strong tailwind at times, or when I was going up the climbs, I was a little bit fitter than I actually was. Many of the climbs out in Italy were around five kilometers long. And if I were to ride those on a regular road bike, they would have taken me about 40 minutes. But on the Lapierre, I was going up them in about 25 minutes. That said though, it wasn't easy by any stretch of the imagination and I was still having to put in a fair bit of effort. My heart rate was going up to around 85% of its maximum and I was definitely out of breath. 
I'd say I even got a considerable workout, although obviously not as much as I would have done had I been riding a regular road bike. So let's put some numbers on it to do some kind of semi-pseudo-scientific calculations on it. And for that, we need to go over to Strava. On the 3rd of September, I used the Lapierre to ride 47 kilometers and climb 730 meters. And on that particular ride, I burnt 1,416 calories. So if we divide the calories burnt by the meters climbed, that works out to approximately 1.9 calories burnt for every meter climbed. A month earlier, on the 9th of August, I used my regular road bike to do 53 kilometers and climb 522 meters. And on that particular ride, I burnt 1,372 calories. So if we do the same calculation, that works out to approximately 2.6 calories burnt for every meter climbed. Using those numbers as a very, very rough guide, it doesn't take a Stephen Hawking's maths genius to work out that when I was riding the Lapierre, it was round about 20% easier than when I was riding my regular road bike. So although it was easier, it wasn't quite as easy as maybe you would first think. Now you could argue that riding up a climb on a regular road bike under your own steam is going to be far more rewarding than riding the same climb on an e-bike. And all I can say here is that I agree with you 100%. And this probably explains why I personally am not ready to buy an e-bike just yet. If you're on the lookout for a true cycling experience or want to do a 100% pure test of your fitness, the only way you're going to achieve that is if you ride a bike with a 1 to 1 gear ratio on a day with absolutely no wind whatsoever. The fact of the matter is that we're all receiving some form of assistance, be that through the use of gears or selecting a flatter route. Most people ride bikes for fitness or for fun, and I can't see how riding an e-bike is going to stop you from doing either of those two things. They allow people of varying fitness levels to ride together, they take the dread out of any of the climbs that are coming up, plus they allow you to ride a lot further. Plus, I would also argue that they do help you to get fit. And if you want to race, you still can. There are specific e-bike segments on Strava, and there are even races such as the Giro E that I saw out in Italy in October. And judging by the efforts of the people riding it, I doubt anyone could accuse them of cheating or being lazy. In my opinion, an e-bike is just another form of bike that you can choose, very much like recumbents or gravel bikes. And at the end of the day, if it's going to get people out cycling, it's got to be a good thing. Thanks for watching.